I'm not going to sit here and uh, uh, tell you you need five gallons of water in your house and you need, you know, canned tuna and stuff like that. I mean, all that stuff, you, got, you know, it's common sense. But what I do want to do is make you think about your situation you're currently in. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do. First thing we're going to do is put some facts up there. You can see that uh, there's two million people here in Las Vegas in the surrounding area, and that includes visitors. Um, and my uh, scenario that I'm going to present to you today, I'm going to argue that uh, by December there will only be 100,000 left if uh, what happens happens. Okay? And what I'm going to ask you to do, you guys are smarter than your average bear, and I'm hoping you guys are going to be with me on this. And, you know, uh, some of you are going to die. Um, <laughs> but let's get to it. Our survival scenario uh, talks about EMP. Most of you guys know what EMP is, um, and you know that if, if an EMP, uh, if it's strong enough, uh, it can wipe out a whole city, um, uh, the electric devices, okay? So no power, no cars, no computer, no cell phones. What you may not know is uh, not only uh, EMPs come uh, from various sources, but one of the the big sources is uh, a so solar flare. And I don't know if I have the date wrong because I did it from memory, but back in the 1800s, a massive solar flare came through. And at that particular time, the only um, technology we really had was telephone or uh, telegraph. And uh, the energy that came through was strong enough to go through and start fires in telegraph offices. So when the solar flare hit the Earth, most of the time it's deflected by the magnetic uh, field around the Earth. Um, but if it's strong enough, it'll penetrate, and any type of uh, uh, metal will conduct it. And, and at this particular time, it's, it, uh, there was enough energy that it conducted uh, and started some fires. And uh, this is a scientist looked at it, and, and if you Google this, you'll find the three, and there's three main articles from pretty uh, 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 reputable sources that will talk about this, okay? Uh, the scientists say it will happen again. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of you are here because you, you know, at least have heard of the 2012 doomsday stuff. That, and coincidentally, coincidentally uh, what happens in 2012 when it comes to the sun? We're supposed to be at the peak of one of the solar uh, cycles, uh, a lot of solar flares. Um, I don't know if I believe in all of that, but uh, um, it's a, well, um, EMPs can also be put out by nuclear devices. Just any nuclear bomb will do that. Uh, whether it be North Korean or Iranian, um, or for that matter, anything from the former Soviet Union. Uh, what's interesting is we, we've all heard about how there's lots of nuclear weapons missing uh, from the old USSR, and uh, hopefully there's no federal agents here, but I talked to a friend of mine that used to work on nuclear weapons, and I asked him, and he says this is not confidential, so that's the only reason I'm telling you. I asked him, I said, you know those nuclear weapons are missing? I mean, how long will they actually last with, you know, could, could they still be active today? And he told me no. He said uh, all the nuclear weapons that turned up missing in the uh, early 90s, uh, they have to have constant maintenance. If you don't, they'll, they just won't work. Uh, you have to keep, uh, keep working on them. Um, but the MP weapons are a different matter. The MP weapons are designed exactly to do one thing, and that's to produce a massive EMP. Okay? They're out there still. They're still missing. We don't really have to worry about the nuclear devices. We have to worry about the missing EMP devices because, you know, um, one or a group of these placed in the right place could do a lot of damage. Okay? And here's where we start your survival challenge. I want you to imagine right now, right now in this place, that EMP goes off and what's the consequence as well. All the lights are going to go off. Um, and that includes emergency lighting, okay? So uh, earlier when I was trying to check on the emergency lighting and see if it actually had a, a chip in it, the FBI stopped me and said, no, you can't mess with it. It's going to uh, screw with our facial recognition, recognition system. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that uh, we, if an EMP hits, we're going to have absolutely no lights in here. So as I go through the next few slides babbling on, I want a few of you... Okay, all of you, at some point, close your eyes for 15 seconds. And I want you to think to yourself, how do I get out of here? How do I get out of here in 15 minutes? How do I get out of here in an hour? Whatever it's going to take. And you have to get out of here 
alive. And some of you go, well, that's not anything. Well, close your eyes. And remember, you're going to do this in the dark. And so um, think about that, and I'm going to babble on. Your basic survival needs, you guys all know, right? Uh, the one you may not know is environment. You need a proper environment. And the thing about Las Vegas is it's an environment. Um, if you're without power, it's an environment that's going to kill you pretty quick. Okay? Uh, if we get a little more detailed into our basic survival needs, and I stole this off the internet. I don't know, some doctor guy from a university. I have no idea who. But I put it in quotations, so that saves me, right? Okay. <laughs> Uh, we know we need oxygen uh, and water, but you know you need protein, salt. Salt's a big one, right? We watch the sports commercials, and we understand that. We need sugar, calcium, other minerals, and vitamins. Proper pH. We also need to maintain the body temperature, 98.6. That'd be the main killer here in Las Vegas if uh, we didn't have air conditioner, so on and so forth. Um, we need sleep. We need to get rid of the CO2, sweat, urine, and feces. Those are all something we need to do to survive, Okay. So by now, you've thought about, well, how am I going to get out of here? Well, the first thing you may not have thought about is uh, trampling, okay? You know who? 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 The Who concert? Anyone? Maybe I'm dating myself. A few people shaking their head. What happened at the Who concert? Yep, White Snake was the most recent one. Fire, people trampled each other. One of the biggest problems you would have getting out of here is seeing your way out, okay? Um, now, some of you have already figured this out. I gave out lighters. You could do the concert thing, you could hold your lighter up, right? Now, the troubling thing is there's a few people in here who've already got to the point where they're making torches because they saw it on TV. Well, I'd take my shirt off, and I'd wrap it around, and I'd light the shirt. And, well, anyone do that before I make fun of you? Okay. As you're trying to get out this door marked exit, you know what's on the other side of that door? Electrical room. It's not an accident, according to the goon that walked me in here. Um, it does look like there's daylight coming through. So this room would be safe. But imagine if you're the room next door and a new, right, at the track one door. Um, one of the things I want to, uh, and I had the picture for this too. If you're wearing mandals, okay, sandals for men, okay. Um, <laughs> Or if you're a woman wearing sandals or you're wearing the flip-flops, you're going to be in danger. Uh, because first of all, even if that daylight through that door is the street, and it kind of sounded like a minute ago, it did sound like a car went by, um, you got at least 750 people in this room heading for that one exit door. And why it's important if you're wearing mandals or sandals or flip-flops or whatever is because if the goofy guy next to you steps on your foot and breaks a bone, your survival uh, chances have just went down. And we'll see why in a little while. Uh, or if they stub your toe and you fall down and 750 people walk on your back to get out, there's going to be a problem. Okay? And so what I'm asking you to look at is, is wherever you go, and that's the whole purpose of this talk, be aware of your situation and understand how you can get out. Now, I want you to think about this in the next hour or two as you're fighting your way down the hallway, what it would be like in the dark or with maybe 10 guys, 12 guys with lighters above their head with the only light to get out. How are you going to get out? Now, if I ask you how many people had a flashlight with you, raise your hand. Okay, you don't qualify for this. I have a manual flashlight here. Who wants it? I think that guy right there is first. Pass it back. It's like a ball game. So be aware. You should always have uh, the equipment you need to survive. Now, if we're moving on real quick to survival challenge number two, let's say that we all get out of this building alive with no broken bones, no one trampled on us. What are you going to do? Now, remember, you guys are probably smarter than the average person around here. And I don't mean that in a mean way. I'm just saying technology, you know what an EMP is, and, you, and you'll be able to recognize it, right? If you walked out, if all the lights go out here, you might just think, oh, it's a localized power failure. But if you walk out, and every single vehicle and every single car out there has stopped, are you guys going to know it's an EMP? Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. You're not stupid. The trouble is, everyone around you 
they'll be scratching their head. Well, I don't know why the car doesn't work anymore. I don't know why the lights went off this whole block. There must be some power line down or something like that. Well, that gives you advantage, okay? Uh, and the advantage is that you know that there's trouble coming because you're in the desert with two million people. And most likely, I don't know this for certain, but I'm going to assume Las Vegas water pumps are not protected from EMP. And so they're, they're not going to be pumping any more water, whether it be from a well or from Lake Mead. Whatever water is present in the city is all that's left. Okay, and there's two million people, and it's 108 degrees out. So survival snapshot. What do you have on you right now? Okay, if and, and this is important because if your room's on the 25th floor, the only way to get to your room is the stairway. There's no elevators. What do you have on you right now that's going to help you survive? Because trust me, you know. Those stairwells are probably at least 110 degrees, and you start climbing those 20 to the 25th floor, and you got a key card. Now, I don't know enough about key cards, but I'm going to assume that there's a chip in that door somewhere, and it's not going to read your card. It's not going to pop open, and you're not going to be able to talk with the bellhop and going up to the 25th floor with you to open your room. And so what I'm asking you is, look at your situation right now. What do you have on you that's going to help you survive into December? Because you're probably not going to go back to your room. Now, those of you with mandals and flip-flops, there's good news for you. So many people will die, I believe, in this scenario, <laughs> that you'll be able to take their shoes off the dead. Okay? Water. You guys usually will use 54 gallons per day. That's just normal use. That's taking a shower. That's washing the machine. That's, you know, whatever. Uh, survival, at least at least one gallon a day. Now, the good news about Las Vegas is uh, there's all kinds of sources. Uh, the big high-rises like uh, what's above us, they'll actually have water tanks, okay? But once those water tanks are empty, there's no more, okay? So they'll have water tanks up there that they, they keep full and, and uh, hopefully full. There's swimming pools. There's some places here in Vegas that, you know, they have a, a swimming pool that has 2 million gallons in it, Okay. But do the math. There's 2 million people. There's 2 million gallons in that pool. How long will it last? Okay. Uh, there's contamination concerns. Look at the guy. Uh, well, we're all pretty clean in here. But when you leave, go look at the guys next door. They're all pretty sweaty and gross. And the first thing one of those idiots will do is they're going to jump into our drinking water. Okay, the the Las Vegas, uh, you know, any pool. Oh, there's a pool. I'm going to go cool off because the air conditioner's off. Well, their sweaty butt, okay, has just jumped in your pool. And I know there's chemicals in that pool, which is another problem. You start. How long can you survive on swimming pool water? Well, any pool boys in here? No. Okay, well, I was going to have you do the pool boy dance, but how long can you can you survive? Well. How long until people start peeing here and uh, doing other uh, bodily functions? Uh, remember, the bathrooms are not going to work. They're all in the dark. Okay? People will start using uh, wherever they can find to go to the bathroom. Okay? Uh, all that is potential hazards, uh, obviously, for disease. Uh, there will also be some uh, problems maybe if they're too close to the water source. If we're up watching the dancing waters, they're no longer dancing and that becomes a water source, and someone pees, that's going to run downhill, right? So you get the, concern, the, the idea that um, there's always going to be some contamination concerns, and the chemical concern, concerns are, are pretty, pretty uh, worrisome, too. If you, next time you go to Walmart, go to the pool section where, they, where you buy the chemicals to throw in your pool and read the package. You know, um, there's some pretty heavy-duty stuff in there that uh, that pool is full of uh, pretty harsh chemicals, and it, and I don't know how long you, you can keep that down. You might throw up uh, or you might uh, poison yourself if you drink too much of it. Remember, we need salt and vitamins. Those are uh, something uh, that we certainly need, uh, especially if you listen to the, the, the commentators or, or the ads trying to sell sports drinks. Um, we're going to skip food because uh, we're losing time here. Uh, disaster environment, this is something I want you to think about. The first one to four hours, everyone's friendly. And this has been proven through the blackouts and disasters all across the country. We're all Americans. We all work together the first four hours. 
after that, it's a free for all. Okay, it's been shown in New York. Uh, obviously, the hurricane disaster, so on and so forth. I want you to imagine what happens. You say, well, what about the police? Let's imagine you're a police officer. You're driving down Las Vegas Boulevard, and uh, EMP hits, and your car goes out. Your radials go out. You step out of your air-conditioned car, or once air-conditioned car, and you got two, three, four, five hundred people come running up to you. What's going on? What's going on? You don't know. And so you sit there and you try to organize people, and then you start wondering, I wonder what my spouse and children are doing right now. And this is what happened in New Orleans. Uh, they, I don't know if you saw this, 50% of police officers in New Orleans walked off the job. They quit. And they, most of them had very good reasons. They walked off the job and they quit during uh, Katrina because they needed to take care of their families. And they were told, basically, if you leave now, you're fired. And he says, well, I'll quit. And they went home, and they took care of their families. Now, understand, that's a decision everyone has to make, but I'm asking you to make that right now. You're out here. You're a police officer. EMP hits. What are you going to do? Are you going to stand there by your patrol car and keep order? All right, everyone keep order here. Are you going to start thinking, this is something big. Every car in town is not working, or nearly every car in town is not working. What's going on? Uh, and, and the answer is they're going to go home. Very few will stay on duty. Uh, what does that mean? Chaos. Chaos. Uh, I put down special groups here. I'm going to just mention it. I might bring it back. There are groups out here that are heavy-duty survivalists. There may be a few people in here. They have weapons, and they are prepared for this type of disaster or nuclear disaster or anything. Like, and they are predators. Okay. Uh, I've actually met a few of these people on the message boards. I don't know, maybe they were 10-year-old kids, but there's some guy I was on a message board, and this was just a shooting message board, shooting board uh, talking about guns, and, and someone posted a survival thing. It wasn't me. And this guy says, well, you know what? I'm not going to lay in supplies. I have enough guns. I'll just go take it. Okay? Well, if you're one of those people, you know, that's, you know, Mad Max stuff, right? You know, I'll just get together a gang, enough weapons. I'll go take what I need. Well... Trouble is, this is America, and everybody has firearms. In fact, you can buy them off the net, okay? And I'm going to teach you how. Let's make the FBI really happy with me. You know, probably won't. I'll be on the no-fly list now. Uh, this is a disclaimer. If you're from some of those states where uh, the Nazis are running it, uh, California, Massachusetts, this probably doesn't apply to you because it's really hard for you guys to get guns. If you're from Oklahoma like me, when I moved to Oklahoma, they issued me a gun at the border and one for every one of my kids. They said, here, you've got to have a gun. Okay? Um, let, me, let me say this. I, and I know I've got a mixed group here, and I've probably got some hardcore uh, criminal hackers in this room. And this is another disclaimer. If you buy a gun okay, and you're also a criminal... You don't want to hook those two up. It's better, trust me, not to have the gun because if they catch you and you got a weapon in your house, all of a sudden we got some serious hard time. Instead of, you know, three years and minimum security and five years probation, all of a sudden you got 25 years and the big roommate you now have thinks you're sexy, right? Um, so if you're a criminal right now, in other words, you're hacking right now and you're – just go to sleep because I don't want to, you know, ooh, you know, I thought I needed a gun. You know, well, that ain't going to help when you go to prison for a long time. All right. Anyway, back to the, mo the important stuff. Most states allow firearm purchases from the net. What you can do uh, if you're really, uh, you can actually buy antique firearm pre-1899 without any license at all off the net. You just get on there, look for antique firearm, and uh, send them your money, PayPal, and they'll send you a pre-1899 weapon over the internet. Pretty cool, right? Uh, some of the people are anti-gun going, oh, that's terrible, that's terrible. If it's a pre-1899 gun, you know how much they cost? Okay. Well, we'll not have some rich lunatics, I guess. Uh, but most of the time, it's not uh, 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 too bad. A CNR license is nothing more than a collector's license. And I got to tell you, I, uh, when I first learned about that, oh, this is great. You know, you can ask my wife. I, I did the paperwork. Man, for 30 bucks for three years, I can, you know. You know how many guns I've bought? 
Zero. <laughs> but I could. Uh, anyway, you go out. It's a four-page application. You get your fingerprints, background check from the local, and, and you go out and you can buy guns. These are the rules real quick. Basically, a CNR collector's license, you have to have the weapon you're buying over the Internet. That they, You don't have to go through any other dealer. You're a collector. You can buy it off the Internet. It has to be at least 50 years old. Okay? And there's some other stuff here they could fall into. Uh, once again, there's a lot more to this, uh, but we're running sl out of time. Uh, but I want to give you some examples. You can buy most World War II weapons off the net with one of these licenses, shipped directly to your house. Uh, you can buy some Cold War weapons. What does James Bond carry, the old one? PPK. All right. You can buy a PPK off the... Uh, so you could, you know, it, it, you know, if I ever get rich... I don't think I'd be buying guns for survival. But I'd just be buying guns because they're cool. Um, um, but I got five kids, so that probably never happened. But, you know, it's a thought. It's a thought. Maybe when I'm old and my kids move away and I don't, you know. Legal use of firearms. This is what you got to know. And this is not just firearms. This is anything. If you want to pull out a, a knife or an ice pick and use it on someone, these are the basic rules you have to f follow. If... Uh, before you use that on someone, to qualify for self-defense, it has to be uh, a threat against you. And that threat has to be uh, of great bodily harm or a threat that they're about to kill you. Okay? In other words, um, before you can use a firearm or any other deadly weapon against somebody, make sure they're doing the same against you. Um, and it doesn't have to be equal. Uh, when I was in law school, I got an argument with my law school professor because she, she put this, you know, she knew I was an ex-cop, and she said, Steve, I want to ask you a question. This is in front of the whole class. And she says, let's say that you're in the bathroom and you have your weapon with you, and a guy pulls out a knife, and he's about 15 feet away from you, okay? Uh, what are you going to do? And I said, I pull out my weapon, and I point it at him and tell him to stop. And she says, well, what if he just started walking slowly towards you? And I said, I would shoot him dead. Two to the chest, one to the head. Cause... <laughs> and she's anti-gun, and she freaks out in front of, oh, you can't do that. Because I'm a law school professor, I know that. And I said, no. I said, two to the chest, one to the head. That's what they trained me. Okay? <laughs> now, it's, uh, it's different nowadays. I think it's two to the chest and two to the head. I, I don't know. Um, and she goes, well, he wasn't even close. You killed him at 10 feet. And I said, He's dangerous at 10 feet. And actually, this is, uh, you can use this if this ever happened. Don't go out and kill someone. This is a big thing. Um, <laughs> this is what the police officers will tell you, okay? This is what they're trained. If that person is within 20 feet of you and they have a deadly weapon, you can kill them. This is the way the police officers are trained, okay? And the reason for it is this. Some people are freaking, oh, that's terrible. 20 feet? And the answer is, is test has shown over and over and over. If your gun is in your holster and someone's with 20 feet of you, they can get to you and kill you before you can get your gun out of the holster and pull the trigger. Okay? So just take that. If you're ever out, I mean, I've gone on calls where a guy had a baseball bat. And uh, uh, I was ready to the chest, one of the head. Uh, I didn't do it. Um, at least they haven't found the body. But... Um, <laughs> It's there. So self-defense, make sure there's actually a real threat against you. Uh, uh, we're gonna, I got 10 minutes left, so we've got to move because there's some really stuff that you really need to know. Survival of medicines, and, and I'm not cursing you, but if you're here and you're on a medication that you require to live, in my scenario here, you are dead. As soon as your medicine runs out, if you don't have a supply, you will die. Okay, so whatever that is, you're going to die. Um, and that's another reason, if you're one of those people who are dependent on medicine to survive, you need to have a stockpile, and you need to carry it with you, even when you go on vacation. Okay, so if you require insulin, uh, the trouble is obviously the heat. Some insulin needs to be refrigerated, uh, that type of stuff. Um, oh, let me talk about fat people, because I know something about that. <laughs> Here in Vegas... You're out in 100 degree weather. Um, if you're more than 20 pounds overweight, there's good news and there's bad news. Okay, the the good news is well, there is no good news right away. The bad the good uh, the bad news is you're probably uh, going to have a rough time surviving just because of your weight. But the good uh, good good news 
if you if I out survive everyone else, you're not going to starve like everyone else. There will be a lot of people actually starving to death. I can go for months. <laughs> Some of you skinny people, you're gone. You're dead. Uh, Potassium iodide, uh, nuke pills for nine bucks. You can get a package of these. Uh, uh, when Chernobyl melted down, they uh, uh, gave these out and saved a bunch of kids uh, from cancer. Gray market meds, uh, you need to know about that. Uh, Canada, Mexico, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is what you need to know. Online sources also keep your fish, birds, and hookers alive. Um, and what I'm talking about here is amoxicillin or any other antibiotic. I want to ask you this. How many people in here has had antibiotics in the last year? Raise your hand. Okay. So that's quite a few. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. What did you have? You know, in the old days, not very long ago, people would die from strep throat. They catch strep throat. Uh, what do we do? We just go get an ant. You know, give me a prescription, doc. And they, t- you know, it goes away, right? Well, in the old days, you could actually die because it progress and eventually kill you. And there's lots of diseases out like that. Uh, gray market meds is what I'm talking about are the meds. Uh, the reason why I said fish and birds is because you can buy fish medication and bird medication. Uh, it's just coincidentally in human dosage amounts. You go to Amazon or eBay uh, and you can buy just about any type of antibiotic that you want and it's legal. Okay. And the reason why I put hookers in there, that was a joke, but also, it's known, uh, or I had a police officer from California tell me, he goes, our hookers out here, instead of, you know, they catch a dose, and instead of going to the doctor, they know they got it, and they'll just go down to the pet store and buy, um, uh, they'll just go down and buy this uh, bird antibiotic or uh, fish. All right, miss will kill you, number one, the government will save you. We know that's not going to happen, uh, but there are people that believe that. I'll just hold up till the government saves me. Okay. Um, myth number two, the trucks will keep going. Everything we eat, drink, uh, comes on a truck, okay? Sometimes a train. But if an EMP strikes, takes out a wide area, uh, you can even take out the whole nation, right? Those trucks ain't going. There's nothing coming in. Um, the flu, make sure you get some vaccinations. Now, some of you are freaking out. You know the new bird food vaccination has not been tested, so you don't want to be first in line. In fact, you want to be months down the line, okay, is my opinion. I'm not going to give my kids the new bird uh, flu or uh, the swine flu, sorry, swine flu vaccination. Uh, you know, look at that. But one vaccination you should go, it's safe, is a pneumonia vaccination. And it's like 25 bucks. Uh, make sure you go get that because a lot of flu you'll end up catching pneumonia and you'll die from the pneumonia. You won't die from the flu, you'll die from pneumonia. All right, here's the answers, all right? You're out here on the, on the pavement. Uh, it's 108 degrees. There's no more air conditioning and time is short. What are you going to do? Some of you already said, you know what? I'm going to go steal one of those cars down at the Imperial Museum. Anyone think that? The, if the car is it, anything pre-1980 on that and everything, but a lot of those older cars are not going to be affected by EMPs. And, you, and if you can get hold of one, you can actually drive it, right? Um, the trouble is there's a lot of other people with the same idea. I'll go get that same car, and we'll be off to, you know, to, I was going to say Vegas. We'll be off to California. Um, and, of course, most of you guys don't have weapons because you flew on the airplane, and most of you did not take time to do that, right? Uh, but you have to be able to hold on to your prize, and once people realize there's only a few operating cars, uh, there's going to be problems. Some other vehicles that might work are garden tractors, okay? Uh, golf carts. Now, it sounds kind of crazy, but understand you have to get through the traffic that's dead. You also have to understand that uh, uh, where you're going to go to survive is quite a ways away. Uh, the other... Uh, wrong answer is go to Nellis Air Force Base, okay? Unless you're a fed uh, already in the military or you have some kind of special skills, you're a doctor or something like that, they're not going to let you in. What they're going to do in a big disaster scenario, they'll pull everybody in that's a relative uh, who, who works on the base, and they're going to string up barbed wire. And the reason is is because that military base is not going to be able to support 2 million people, okay? There are going to be people dying outside the fence, okay? And the, you guys read up on the Berlin airlift. Even if there are cargo planes flying in, they cannot supply two million people. Uh, Berlin was a, uh, uh, a deal where they were cut off and they had to fly in airplanes, all the supplies, and, and there's people starving in Berlin when that was going on. 
Uh, so same thing. You can't find enough supplies to keep Las Vegas alive. I will shelter in place. I'll find a place, I'll hold up, and I'll shelter in place. The trouble is, it's going to be in the 100 degrees all the way through September. Okay? A lot of people battling for water. Uh, unless you have a spring, basically, somewhere, unless you have some significant amount of water, you will die. The correct answer to this problem is you need to go to Lake Mead. The trouble is it's 35 miles away. You mandals and flip-floppers. Can you imagine walking on pavement or asphalt uh, 35 miles? Uh, the key thing, if you can get a golf cart, obviously, you'd like to drive as far as that baby lets you, right? Uh, you have to take supplies with you, okay? Uh, you got to take food. Um, you, you know, so you get the garden tractor and drive down the road. People might think you're crazy, but you might be a uh, few people survive. It's 35 miles. Even at nighttime, it's 99 degrees around here, right? Um, you got to get to Lake Mead. And once you get to Lake Mead, the boats are all going to be gone already. You know, well, I'll get a boat. I'll go fishing. I'll live it up on the lake. Why the hundreds of thousands of people are dying, okay? Uh, they're going to be gone probably by the time you make it to Lake Mead in this scenario. Uh, in fact, the road between here and Lake Mead will just be like a disaster scene. You remember the, the highway of death in Iraq when the Iraqis, it, that's what it'll look like, except it'll just be uh, tens of thousands of people that did not make it. All right. Uh, the trouble is, once, you, once everyone gets to Lake Mead, there's no food. There's plenty of water. There's no shelter. There's nowhere to get in out of the sun. You can have all the water you want, but eventually sunburn is going to start taking a toll on people. Okay? You have to have shelter. Uh, so on the way out of town, obviously, you need to think about that. You get your tarps. Uh, it's time to go. Uh, the last thing I want to say, the way to get out, once you get to Lake Mead, you've got to keep going. You've got to head south. You don't want to head, head, uh, head anywhere else. You get and you head south. Uh, the trouble is, as you start coming in populated areas, they're not going to want you. You're a refugee, okay? And there's an awful lot of you, and uh, there's going to be trouble, obviously. Uh, if you don't head south, you're going to starve, okay? Uh, if you've got any uh, flaws in, uh, besides a computer error, you can email me here. Um, Last thing I want you to remember, wherever you're at, think about the situation you're in and what you do to need to survive if there's any type of problem anywhere. Thank you. Enjoy the